Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battles. Today, I wanna to talk about Age of Sigmar's one big problem. And that big problem is, in my opinion, endless spells. And I should like endless spells because my preference is always to have rules tied to miniatures. Actually, one other problem I would say Age of Sigmar has is it has, similarly to Big 40K, it has rules that are tied not to miniatures. In army construction, my preferred thing is you purchase your units and you purchase upgrades for those units. But what I don't like is army-wide upgrades because they're not necessarily tied to your specific miniatures or to your faction. It's just kind of this ethereal buff that you're purchasing for your army. And since it's not actually tied to a miniature, I don't feel any attachment to that rule or those rules. You know, I love purchasing warlord traits for my heroes because even though it's they're called traits, they're usually just objects, like the punchiest punchy power fist or the teeth of Terra. And it's really cool to be like, see that guy's helmet? That helmet is special. It gives him one extra attack. Like, I love rules like that. And I should like endless spells because you do have to purchase endless spells and they are tied to miniatures. My big problem with the endless spells is most of them look kind of bad. Like, really bad. I love Age of Sigmar, and one thing I really love about Age of Sigmar is how gorgeous and beautiful and perfect all of their miniatures are. And then when we get to the endless spells, it kind of seems like Games Workshop kind of cheaped out on them. And so I want to go through all of the endless spells and just quickly give them all a little bit of a critique. First up, let's look at the Ossiarch Boner Boys endless spells. And let me just give some general critiques first. I don't like that these endless spells are on bases. They're not actually units for your army. I mean, they're sort of because you treat them very much like units. You purchase them for your for your army. You purchase them essentially for your army to have the possibility of casting them in game. You can move them across the battlefield. Obviously, they need something to sit on or just to be on for gameplay. But I just I really don't like the look of the bases. It's these are tokens and there's ways to do tokens really, really in a cool way. But to have a miniature be a token, it kind of takes away from the aspect of it being a miniature. It doesn't have a personality. It's just a, a foom. I mean, I grew up on Harry Potter and Naruto. I there, you know, you can do some really cool stuff with magic, but having every piece of magic be like a, a little kind of guy is really, really awkward. The Ossiarch Boner Boys have a skeletal vulture which is fine. The way that the Ossiarch Boner Boys are is they are entities created out of bones. So it does, it, the, the, the vulture obviously doesn't have accurate bones to how a vulture skeleton would be, but that it shouldn't be that way because that's not how the Boner Boys do. But uh, yeah, it's a bird, a guy, and a D12 with skulls for part of those faces. I don't know. I mean, they're kind of some of the better painted um, endless spells from Games Workshop, but man, they just don't strike me as that is cool. Like the Ossiarch Boner Boys are cool. They're disgusting. They're just dry, crunchy bones that have been cobbled together through magic. But seeing these just tokens taking up so much space on these bases with the little, the little Games Workshop grass tufts tucked here and there, it's just, uh, it's just not doing much for me. And speaking of not doing much for me, the Flesh Eater Court. Now the horses, the little undead horses coming out of the ground is kind of cool. Um, the Blood Chalice is not. <laughs> like, is the chalice gonna float over and pour onto people? Like, how lame? You know, cause when we picture these battles in our head, because we don't picture in our head moving guys around a couple of inches here and there and getting into within one inch engagement range. We think of swords clashing and knives and teeth and gnashing fangs, tearing apart and shredding our enemies in brutal bloody carnage. And then a chalice, a little bone shaped chalice floats across the battlefield with blood spilling out of it. It's, it's just lame. It's just really lame. It breaks the immersion for me. And as cool as a, a graveyard fence popping out of the ground in order to give you a better save or to do something to separate you from your opponent, it's just not that cool. I don't know. Also, it's, we're starting to get into, I don't feel like the Games Workshop sculpting team tries as hard on these endless spells. We're definitely gonna see definitely bigger, bigger problems later on in some of the older endless spells, but I don't know. I think it might also have to do with these aren't guys. And so they don't have that spark of life to them. They're not characters. They're just shapes 
they're just a chalice like the i don't know the blood falling out of that chalice it doesn't really look like blood it doesn't really look like smoke they dragon dropped some skull assets into it to make it a little spookier but i don't know it feels very scooby-doo it doesn't feel very impressive now the stormcast eternal endless spells do feel a little bit more impressive and i do actually really like the uh, meteorite slamming into the ground i think that that is an excellent endless spell i think it works very well as a token and i actually don't think it needed a base I think that, that would fit just fine if it was just flat on the bottom and you just put it on the ground where you wanted your meteorite to land. <laughs> the tornado of hammers is straight out of Bugs Bunny. I mean, come on, that is not cool at all. Games Workshop, when they do their really, really cool, like animated little trailers where you get like a cool looking stormcast walking through, ready to get into some action. You would never see a golden hammer tornado show up in one of those animations. Just Games Workshop, think to yourself, is this cool? You can have a spell that's called the Storm of Hammers and just have it be like lightning bolts or just generic energy and have, you know, but the Stormcast call it the, the, the Tornado of Hammers or something. It doesn't literally have to be a Tornado of Hammers. And I don't know, the Stormcast Compass, Celestial, blah, blah, blah. It's fine. It's boring. It's lame. Moving right along to the Lumineth Realm Lords. I do really like the um, symbol being cast out of electricity that makes these three little things that you can use to, like, block. I think that that is actually a decent token. Don't make it the ground. Just have lightning terminate flat so that you don't actually have to have a base for your miniature it's it just looks trashy and it's gonna look really trashy when you know your lumineth realm lords are based in like feudal japan like a lot of people do because it looks really really sweet with like the cherry blossoms and stuff and then you've got that m marching its way across the battlefield of a lava of a lava place or an ice place it's just they it would have been so easy to have the spell effect just terminate at the ground instead of also providing a little bit of dirt that you have to decide what color of dirt it's going to be. Inevitably, you're going to pick the wrong color of dirt. I don't know. It's... <sighs> the other two are fine, whatever. It's two Barbie gems in a fairly uninteresting whirlwind of smoke. I mean... Sure, some of it comes down to painting, but some of it comes down to magic effects are really, really tricky to pull off. And I don't believe Games Workshop tried that hard on the swirl. I mean, it's a little bit of like a Dairy Queen Blizzard like clip art. It doesn't look that good. The the bricks, the like the the stones coming together to form a, the symbol of the Lumineth Realm Lords. That's not bad. Come up with a way that you don't need a base for that. And I would probably be OK with it. But the two gems on the little Dairy Queen ice cream. Thumbs down, in my opinion. Now we get to some cool ones. The Daughters of Cain. Blood Snake, love the Blood Snake. And you know what? The Blood Snake touches the base or touches the ground in all sorts of places. You didn't need a base, Games Workshop. Blood Snake would have been fine without a base. And you know what? The the dagger, it's not a dagger tornado. It's just blood dagger. Zuh. They're just there. I think that that is acceptable. Really didn't try that hard on the blood though. I mean, I get it. Like, you know, you make your blood drop asset. It's really, really easy to go into your computer program and just say like, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste and just make a little bouquet of blood. But that's not what blood looks like. Like you can just go online and Google, you know, jumping in a puddle and take that puddle and the way it splashes and just copy that. I don't think that Games Workshop tried very hard on these endless spells. I think that they cheapened out. I think that they didn't give their sculptors, and maybe they told their sculptors, go go 70% on these. Like we always, you know, we ask you to go 100% on our normal miniatures, and that's why they're excellent and amazing. 70% effort on these endless spells. Blood Snake is pretty cool, but also, you know, all those scales just drag and dropped. They're not, uh, you know, they're not amazing. And the hands, the hand, the hand grabbing the heart. I mean, that's a Yu-Gi-Oh card art right there. It's not, it's just nothing. It's just not cool. Imagine your daughters of Cain are dancing across the battlefield, just mauling things, brutally, savagely stabbing, backstabbing because they're somehow the good guys, but they're so evil. 
And then this fisty thing just wanders into the battlefield. It's not cool. And moving on to the Night Haunts. It's so lame. It's so Scooby-Doo. We got a silly sickle. We got an hourglass. And then we got a Jack in the Box. Are we really doing Jack in the Box for the Night Haunts? The Night Haunts were so cool. Games Workshop made spooky ghosts cool. They did such a good job. And then we've got a spirit Halloween prop that you can buy every October of a little skull that goes hehehe. <laughs> ah, oh, my goodness. I'm just gonna move on from these. Okay, getting to the Beasts of Chaos. Now, actually, I really, really like some of these. Not as endless spells, but just as miniatures. The bull that's just like terminates in fire looks pretty darn good. Also very, very well painted. Who cares about a horn? I don't think casting a horn is cool. I don't think that that's exciting. I really do like the birds though, the vicious birds. If I was collecting Dark Eldar, which I am, and I wanted to bring some razor wing flocks, I'd probably purchase this and then use these guys as my razor wing flocks because Games Workshop doesn't currently sell any. They sell one that comes in the new upgrade frame for Kill Team, but that's just one. I, you need flocks. And so I actually think that these are quite nice little bird miniatures and they have bases because they're birds, but they're spells, so they shouldn't have bases. So. Moving right along, Gloom Spite gets. I love everything Gloom Spite gets. I love the humor and the silliness and the over the topness. But I have done, I have, I have done 3D modeling. And let me tell you, those spiders, they took one spider and then they just duplicated it. Every single one of those spiders is identical. That is not good enough, Games Workshop. You guys are better than that. You have done spider swarms in the past that are far superior because you actually made a bunch of unique individual spiders and the ones that you duplicated, you still altered so that their poses was slightly different. Well, these are magical spiders. They're not magical, they're not, it's, it's so lazy. It is so lazy. I love the silly mushroom. I love the pot that has legs. I love the bad moon just exploding onto the battlefield. They didn't need bases. The spiders, come on Games Workshop. That is, that is an, that is like one evening of digital modeling to make that spider happen. You're better than that. Moving on to the Disciples of Zinch Endless Spells. These are actually painted fantastic. Holy moly ravioli. These pieces are excellent, excellent fodder. If you want to kit bash some, in some really cool Disciples of Zinch or 40K Zinch. I mean, the, the uh, Karos Fate Weaver heads would look lovely attached to a demon prince that book would look phenomenal flying on top of a rhino or a land raider same goes for the zinch symbol with the eye in the middle of the flames these are actually pretty cool and i would be fine with them if they figured out a way for them to not need bases you know and you know what just make extra fire just make extra fire so that they don't need to have bases tokens shouldn't have bases games workshop but uh good work heavy metal team those models are painted fantastic Moving on to the Skaven, we've got rocks with lightning and a bell and an actually really nice looking rat swarm. But um, again, people are gonna be confused. Like I would be confused if I was looking at a Skaven army and I saw a rat swarm and be like, oh, is that a swarm of rats? No, actually that is the endless spell swarm of rats. It's different, but it sort of behaves the same in game. It just doesn't, just doesn't make any sense games or shop. They should have made them ghost rats. Make them ghost rats. That would have been lovely. A little swarm of ghost rats. Just think about it for a little harder. I'm convinced they didn't try. I am convinced they didn't try. Moving on to the Slaves to Darkness. Once again, beautiful kit bashing fodder. The metal spikes stabbing up out of the ground, the evil face belching fire, the chaos symbol and covered in flames. They would look so good glued on top of a land raider or some other similar vehicle for chaos. I will almost certainly pick some up and do just that when I get around to collecting chaos, but uh, as endless spells, you know what, as endless spells, actually, these ones are kind of all right. Just come up with a way to not have it be ground and I am fine. The one belching fire is a little bit on the silly side, but I feel like that's maybe fine for chaos. And speaking of chaos, Hedon Knights of Slanesh. I actually really want to buy this pack specifically to use the Slaneshi demon face with the tongue, because I think that that would actually make a great head for a chaos war, uh, a chaos knight. I think it would look really, really sick. And then, you know what, throw the portal on top with the hand Oh God, it's a giant human hand. Once again, Games Workshop, think if it's gonna be cool. And if it's not gonna be cool, don't do it. Because that is just a human hand coming out of the ground. 
Is there actually a humongous giant underneath the ground and you're just seeing the hand? It's not. It's the ad it's it's thing from the Adams family. It's moving on. This Sylvaneth Endless Spells. I'm probably gonna have to bat buy these, and I don't want to, because even though these are probably less offensive because they are literally real things, if they're real things, just make them playable units in the game. And sure, endless spells are sort of playable units, but then just do away with endless spells and let spells be spells and models be models. Because as cool as having a tree just kind of prancing along on its roots, the uh, bees that are already a unit that you can take on your leaders for Sylvaneth and a graboid from the movie Tremors, it's just not doing anything for me. I just don't like it. I just do not. And this one isn't actually aligned. It's aligned with death. It's not aligned to a specific faction, but I just wanted to bring it up because the Forbidden Power spells has Nagash just going, ah, and it made me laugh. Just little Nagash poking his head up. But I think this is also a good example of Games Workshop phoning it in because two of these spells are mirrored, which Games Workshop doesn't do. They don't mirror things. If they need two models, they make two models, but they're mirrored. Same goes for the little pyramids on the ground. And literally the boat, the Boner Boy's boat is just, they, they came, they made one section of it and then just duplicated it across. And then they came up with the bow. Like, just, I I get that you can get away with things like that. Like, if, if I want, that's exactly how I would do, how I would make a boat made out of bones because I'm not a good digital modeler and it would take me years to come up with all of these intricate and detailed ways for bones and ribs and, and femurs to make up this boat. But Games Workshop has the ability to do it. And the fact that they didn't leads me to know that they didn't try. Games Workshop didn't try. I think the endless spells from Games Workshop are a joke. And I think that they took away a valuable slot from all of us that could have been used to actually make units for all of these factions because these are not really units. They're spells, they're tokens. I would have much rather seen a new Skaven unit or a new, a new Zinch unit and let there just be one box called Endless Spells and it's fairly generic fireball lightning bolt portal. Just let it be that or force field barrier. Games Workshop makes clear plastic things. Make the endless spells out of the clear plastic. That way they look visually distinct from miniatures so that people will see them on the battlefield and say, ah, that is a token. That is a spell. That is not a miniature. And then the miniatures can be the miniatures and the spells can be the spells and never the two shall mix. And then I will be happy and satisfied or maybe I'm just being a horrible curmudgeon who's poo-pooing on all of these cool things. Some of them are fine, but I don't like them. Let me know in the comments below if you what you think of my thoughts on the endless spells, or if I'm totally right and you completely agree with me. But I just don't think the endless spells are cool. What I think is cool is the Eons of Battle Patreon. Over there, we make new STL terrain packs for all your favorite war games every single month. This month, we have the Starship Bridge, a grim, dark, beautiful starship full of stained glass windows. We also make one extra episode of Eons of Battle every single week where we take a look at our viewers' miniatures and give them some critiques or ideas of how to improve their painting. And you can get your name on one of my Black Templar Space Marines. I'm sorry to really tear into Games Workshop like this, but really, I think the endless spells are confusing and frustrating because I think it's fairly obvious Games Workshop didn't try that hard on them. And I just don't understand Games Workshop not putting their their all into it because Games Workshop always goes hard on all of their products. And it's kind of sad to see them not try. It's weird. Thanks for watching.